Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We turn our attention to football. Game week three of the Jamaica Premier League ended on Monday with Portmore United and Vare playing out a nil all draw at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. Let's take a look now at the results. A nil all draw between Portmore and Vare United, Cavalier overcoming Chapelton 3 0, a 2 0 win for Arnold Gardens against Waterhouse, four goals in that win for Harbour View versus Don Beholden's one goal, Humber Lion beat Falkland 2 0. A 1-0 win for Montego Bay against Mullines and the Mount Pleasant Tivoli Gardens match has been postponed. So after three game weeks, so this is how the table looks. Montego Bay at the top of the table, a total of seven points. They've played three matches so far. Cavalier six, Harborview in third spot with six points also. And Arnett Gardens round up the top four. They also have a total of six points. Let's take a look now at the bottom of the table. We have Vare United on two points after three matches. Falkland having played three matches also. They're yet to get any point in Chapelton. Still no points. So, George and Lance, three match weeks into the season. What are your takeaways? I'll start with you first, Lance. George gets a little break. It's his okay. birthday. <laughs> well, well, my first takeaway would be Donovan Duke's work with Montego Bay United. They were unquestionably the worst team in the Premier League last year. And uh, I know it's early season and just three, three games gone, but they're already at the top of the table. And Duke has pretty much built in his career as a coach who builds teams from struggling positions to make them contenders and uh, the indications are that he's doing that again with Montego Bay United as he had done with Waterhouse and Veer and several other teams in the past. Yep, the question is will things go to the kind, well, will, will they go, will they trend the kind of way that will allow Duki, Duki to see out the season at a big club? Uh, that's the only question and you have to ask that question because <laughs> of his peripatetic nature yes. but look the man uh, there's oh. no you know what it's funny you mentioned Duki. i heard a woman and two men would come to the games on sunday early they were there for the the, the, the big clash between waterhouse and arnie but they were there for the dunby and harbor yes. game and the lady was making the point that they were they were cussing waterhouse coaches and they said that Duki. Oh, like the man said, you remember what happened to Duki when Duki came over here and the fans booed him and everything and the woman said, yeah, but him can coach. And everybody said, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, say whatever you want to say, yeah. Duki can coach. Yeah. So yeah. even his critics admit that the man can coach and I'm happy to see the start Moby has had. My takeaway would be in sport, in life, in anything, it's always a particular pleasure to see a plan come together. When a team sets out a game plan and it works that way because... The quality of your play forces your opponents to function in a kind of way that helps your plan to come together. Sometimes the opponents are just crap and your plan comes together by virtue of that. But sometimes you impose yourselves on the opponents and you, 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 you train the stream of the game in the direction that you want. When I say that to hail Harborview, the defending yes. champions. Harborview against Dunby Holden in the opening game of the doubleheader at Arden Gardens on Sunday. Harborview's start to the game it was clear the instructions were, what the instructions were based on how the game played. Half of you were content to let, guess what? We're going to give them the ball. We're going to invite them. Let's crowd our half, collapse into our half, low block, invite them to break us down. And then we're going to try to hit them on the break because you have Nicholas Hamilton who's speedy, Ronaldo Robinson who's fast, Demar Rose can run. There are so many boys in the half of you team who are really good athletes. They did that. Don Beholden came forward, were struggling to break them down. Then Harborview, bam, scored once. And then they gradually emerged out of that defensive low block in the first half to really improve their football. Then in the second half, remember, they started slow in the second half, inviting them, leading 2 1. Yes. They were all over Don Beholden. It, it was all, as, they, were, they played as if a, like a team that was trailing and were being pressed by the coach to go and hunt. The, the equalizer. What they were trying to hunt was the third goal. And they went and they were all over Don Beholden. They got that goal and then the game was easy. And then the spirits of Don Beholden were the spirit of Don Beholden was so broken that by the time the fourth goal went in, it was an easy one. The Don Beholden players, the coach admitted, had stopped playing effectively. It was a very good performance and it was very good to see a plan conceptualized, 
implemented, it all came together. Yeah. Hats off to Harbour View. Mm. Yeah. And because Hamilton's potency from the playoff phase of last season to now, um, making headlines for, for Harbour View again. And uh, we have to, you know, strengthen the point that George just made by highlighting how much of an achievement it was, it was for Harbour View to win the title last year. Yes. Because they finished sixth in the regular season. I don't think even the staunchest Harbour View fan would have expected them to win the Premier League. So they went into the playoffs as the worst team. And they, 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 they battled their way to the title. They, they hardly won matches in normal time. They won a lot of their matches in extra time and on penalties. They won the final on penalties. And it was such a representation of heart, determination and diligence that won Harbour View the title last year. And the players, having come into this new season as champions, are no more confident. So I think Harbour mm -hmm. View, they're going to be hard to beat. Yeah, mm -hmm. look, we'll definitely be looking at them very closely. We'll still with football ahead of their international friendly against Paraguay on Thursday. Jamaica's senior reggae girls were given a boost when Jamico, Jamaica's largest fleet management company, donated a bus to assist with their preparations for the World Cup. President of Jamaica, Brian Pengali, says supporting the reggae girls wasn't a difficult decision to make. We're all Jamaicans. We need to support this program. Um, and this is about Jamaica for football at high levels, medium levels, school levels. And we are in here to in, in support the JFF in everything they're doing. So this is a no-brainer for us. The bus is about 7.3. The rest of it is made up of maintenance and insurance because the JFF has no cost on this bus other than to provide a driver and the fuel. The first contract we have signed, which has been done very quickly, is a year with options to renew on both sides. So we're in this for the long term. Meanwhile, President of the Jamaica Football Federation, Michael Ricketts, says he's grateful for the sponsorship. 12 national units, six on either side of the gender. So um, transportation always going to be an issue. We do have a coast of our own, but um, certainly that was never enough. And we are very, very grateful for this um, partnership with Stuarts. We will need as many of such vehicles as is possible, because like I said, we do have six teams on either side of the agenda that we have to move around for national engagements. So this is very timely and we're extremely appreciative. We certainly, this bus um, has been handed over to us for us to keep and care. Uh, certainly there are certain logistics relating to other sponsorship arrangements that have not yet been finalized. But this um, part, this component, the bus will be in our care. Um, it will be insured and maintained by Jamico. So um, we're just very, very excited. And we want to implore other corporate entities to come on board because um, the JFF is on a, a new path. The JFF is rebranding. The JFF is um, doing a huge repair job. And I want to commend our new general secretary, whom I would, would want to suggest has hit the track running, so to speak, and already we have gotten a number of things done. We have um, a lot of plans in place. And uh, we just want to ensure that we not just play football, but like I've said, we must have a social impact on this nation of ours. Personally, I tend to believe that once you work hard and of course you do extremely well, you should be rewarded and the Jamaica Reggae Girls have definitely impressed me and I think it's a well-deserved um, gift for them. Yep, so when the question goes around corporate Jamaica, so what did you do for the, what, what have you done for sport? So, well, we I gave the Reggae Girls a bus. Mm -hmm. Big thing to say, it's a big thing to say, it's a, it's a, it's a very significant uh, gift a very significant donation if you want to call it that it will solve practical problems that you heard President Ricketts talk about the JFF having with the number of teams that they have to move around and you know I mean some people do some sponsorship deals that really amount to not much and not that we are criticizing sponsors but this is one of the most practical donations that could have been made and I applaud it mm. Thanks. Yeah, I think this is also a representation of one of a few positive things for Jamaica's football 
in recent months. And I think we can look forward to the 2023 campaign mm -hmm. with a level of optimism. They have um, employed a new general secretary, who is uh, Mr. Chung, who has a solid business acumen. Uh, of course, the team, the reggae boys, have been sponsored by Adidas. Um, which is huge. Uh, Hal Grimson, the Iceland coach, is now in charge of the reggae boys. So a few good things or a few positive signs for Jamaica's football heading into the 2023 season. And this boss for the reggae girls look, looks good. Right, and the reggae girls, they play Paraguay on Thursday. So that's also something to look forward to. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we have much more for you.